Hello again, I'm Braddock Supervisor John Cook. Welcome back to Braddock Neighborhood News, the program I am using to provide you with information on issues facing our community and ideas on how we can strengthen our neighborhoods. This month, I'm pleased to welcome Taylor Chess, the Braddock District appointee to the Fairfax County Economic Advisory Commission, and Michael Doherty, my appointee to the Fairfax County Small Business Commission. Both of these gentlemen are successful and respected businessmen here in Fairfax, and their expertise aids in the shaping of our economic future. Taylor, Mike, thanks for joining me on the show today. Well, thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, let's talk a little bit about, first, the commissions that you each serve on, what you do. Taylor, you're on the Economic Advisory Commission. What's that all about? Economic Advisory Commission is a commission that's set up of businessmen in the area, uh, as well as county staff uh, that give a 30,000 foot level look at what's happening in the economy and how it's affecting businesses in the economy for the, for the Board of Supervisors. And we kind of use the EAC, the Economic Advisory Commission, sort of for uh, longer term trends and that kind of thing. It's not a day to day or a week to week outlook. Right? It, it, it's not and we have, we have it set up in three different tiers. We have the overall advisory uh, that meets quarterly and discusses topics, uh, topical issues that uh, give a perspective to the board from various aspects of, of the community. We have the executive board that meets monthly and then the implementation committee that is actually set up to implement the plan that was created last year by the advisory commission. Great, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail, but Mike, let's talk about the Small Business Commission. Uh, you've been on it for about a year, and, and so what are you guys working on? Right, this is my first year. Originally, the Small Business Commission uh, dealt a lot with uh, purchasing from the county, and over time, that expanded into just helping small businesses on a, on a general uh, scale. And we have appointees from the different districts, at-large members. We're mostly small business owners, um, and also supported by the county staff. And the idea of the commission is to develop uh, ideas and topics both to educate our board but also to help business folks. Uh, I was at your vendor forum earlier in the year and there's some other events coming up that really are um, highlighting uh, topics that can help small businessmen. That's right. I'd like to talk about those events um, and also uh, I saw that <clears throat> we report to the board and, and advise the board but also each one of the board members also gives us um, a to-do list as well. So it's really a back and forth uh, work, work relationship with the board. Let's talk a little bit about the, the individual, um, your backgrounds, what you're bringing to your commissions. Mike, you've been, your family's been in business in Braddock mm -hmm. District for many years. Yes, <clears throat> I'm actually a practicing attorney. I was in Arlington for about 15 years and then I, about 10 years ago I came out here to, to Fairfax. And along the way, um, my family business, which is Fairfax Memorial Park and the funeral home that are on Braddock Road, uh, my, my father, I'm third generation, my father uh, retired a couple years ago and my family asked me to come on as president. So uh, yes, I've been here in the county uh, in business for a while and my, our family business uh, has been here for more than 50 years. And Taylor, maybe at the other end of the spectrum, you work for the Peterson Companies, one of the biggest uh, uh, companies around and historically a company that uh, has really built a good chunk of Fairfax County. We have. The, uh, I've been with the company for 25 years. Uh, I took a little stint with a public company in the middle of that. I uh, actually grew up in the Braddock District, went to Robinson Secondary School. Um, the Peterson Companies uh, as a land developer is, has developed quite a bit of, of Fairfax County in Northern Virginia. All right, and in redistricting last year, the whole Fairfax Corner area came into Braddock District. And of course, that's a Peterson Company project. That is a Peterson Company project. I'm Senior Vice President of the Retail of the Peterson Companies, and, and that's one of our lifestyle retail centers uh, that we're very proud of. Now, you know, most people will, will agree that Fairfax County is a great place to do business and uh, for a number of different reasons, but let's talk about those. Mike, from the standpoint of small business, family-owned business, what is it about Fairfax that's attractive? Well, I can't imagine a better place to, to be to, to do business with all the people we have here. The, uh, it's an upper income area. Uh, the, the county really does a great job, I think, of working on uh, infrastructure for the county and uh, um, 
there is so much out there to assist. Uh, I mean, we, on my situation with the Small Business Commission, we have several programs uh, that are set up to assist small businesses, and uh, I just can't imagine a better place to be. And Mike, you know, I've, it's um, people don't know uh, the number of women-owned and minority-owned businesses in Fairfax, especially small businesses, is very high. It is very high. I don't know the exact uh, percentages, but uh, I mean, we really have a melting pot here. I see that at our cemetery and funeral home. We, we deal with all cultures, and uh, we really have everyone here in this community. And I think that's really part of, um, part of the appeal of the county for business is that um, you can be an older business, a new business, no matter who your owner is, male, female, um, backgrounds from all over the world, people find opportunity here mm -hmm. in the county. It's open to all, right, that's right. And Taylor, of course, your company's been here a long time, Peterson's companies, and uh, uh, within Fairfax Corner and your other business developments, you see a whole lot of businesses come into the county, and, and why is that? You know, we've got a really strong demographic. We've got uh, a highly educated community, and we have a very high income level as compared to other communities around the country. We also are somewhat insular with uh, federal government here. So from a retail and, and large business perspective, um, we're not affected as much as some other areas of the country. Um, we were just at uh, Urban Land Institute uh, Council in Denver and uh, talking to other people from around the country. They're very jealous of what we have here in, in Northern mm -hmm. Virginia and Fairfax and, and the D.C. metro area. And you know, you've both mentioned the, the, our uh, educated population, and uh, that's a real tribute to our public school system, which is one of the best in the country. And, and there's really a synergy between business and education. The more business we bring in, uh, commercial development makes money for the county. We use that money to fund schools. Schools produce a highly educated workforce and population that helps business. And from the development side, from, from new housing uh, and, and housing turnover, with the strong schools, it's always bringing uh, you know, better, you know, better pricing and, and uh, good sales for the housing. Mike, you know, um, another great aspect of Fairfax County is the fact that we have so many people who volunteer, such as both of you in your commissions, the Small Business Commission find uh, just a lot of business folk, men and women um, of all backgrounds, members of chambers and rotaries and, and all sorts of groups, and, and that adds a community strength as well. Yes, <clears throat> most of the members on our commission are very active in their local uh, communities, and uh, we, we get all of that input uh, to bear when we meet at our commission. And I think that benefits uh, especially small business, those community ties. You know, I know when we're doing events in the Braddock District, both your companies have been sponsors of the Braddock Nights, uh, which is our summer concert series. And when we have other events, uh, always willing to contribute into the community. We always appreciate that. But and hopefully it's good for business, too, because you're, you are citizens of the community as well. Yeah, we have to keep our name out there. Um. You know, advertising for cemeteries and funeral homes is not an easy thing, but we, <laughs> we want to just be advertise by being available uh, in the community. In Fairfax Corner, we love being Fairfax's downtown, the Fairfax uh, County's downtown, the Braddock District's uh, downtown, and providing the opportunity to host events and uh, different uh, concert series at Fairfax Corner draws, draws everyone together. Yeah, that's, that's another thing that the county, I think, is getting better and better at is, is sort of these regional, I guess we call them activity centers, but Fairfax Corner being a great example, not only can you go to shop, but restaurants, you've got the outdoor area uh, where you have all sorts of, of events there, and, and Lake Acting Park and the other end of the district where we have Braddock Nights and, and all around the county. Then that's part of really what the environment of the county is and, right. and has become. What we're seeing in the retail business with, with the change of, um, with the onset of the internet and, and internet sales, everyone wants to know, well, how are retailers going to survive? And what we're finding in the retail business and, and small businesses that are, that are going to our shopping centers, they're appreciating much more these events that we're putting on and, and creating activity centers as opposed to just retail venues. 
Yeah. You know, I, I, I've learned that in this job, in part talking to you and, and, and John Peterson and others in your company about the idea of place mm -hmm. and creating um, places that people want to go. It's not just, well, I need dinner, so I'll go out and grab a bite, but it's here's an interesting restaurant, maybe in an area that, oh, there's something going on outside. There's right. a concert or somebody playing something. And, and it's all about sort of um, creating events. Right. And, and Mike, that's mm -hmm. good in, in small business as well in, it in is. our communities. And speaking of events, I'd like to tell you about two of the events we have at our commission. Um, one that you came and gave our kickoff uh, address at the uh, small, uh, I'm sorry, at the vendor forum that we had in uh, December. And it was really amazing. I think there were 25 agencies of the county and several hundred people that attended. And this was to help people do business with the county, small businesses. Uh, up, it was here at the government center, and upstairs there were a lot of forums, um, s panels that I, I um, moderated one on marketing, and these were uh, people in, that are out here in business, marketing companies, uh, experts that came and donated their time uh, to help small business. Downstairs on the first level was, uh, I think they called it a reverse trade show, where the county is actually sitting there and you can walk right up to their booth and find out uh, what kind of services do they need and how do you contact them. And then the second thing we have coming up is uh, uh, in December, December 6th, uh, with the skill source. And it, it's a business incubator and provides funds to businesses to help defray some of their um, uh, labor costs. And uh, that'll be a first for us to put that on. Let's talk about that incubator concept because uh, I know George Mason is working on that same yes. concept ways to assist small businesses. Tell us about that. Well, I don't know the, all the details. I, I am aware that they have that and there are several more in the county. Uh, there are a handful of business incubators. And you can go there and if you just have the idea how to, that you want to start a business, they can tell you how to start it. If you've already started, they can get you on the right track. Because I think one of the worst things you can do in business is not pay attention to you know, your regulatory compliance, taxes, uh, following the law and you can get carried away with an idea without really doing all the legwork. Right, so they have that mentoring almost. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's critical, especially in the retail uh, business, to, to have a mentor, to have a, a, a place to, to get that type of information. Because so often people have the great idea, uh, the great food concept or, or a retail idea, yet they don't mm -hmm. understand the process of business um, and, and can get out over their skis. Basically. Yeah, you know, anybody in business, and, and myself included, because I, I own a law firm, and, and so you've got whatever it is that you do, and then you have the business, and both have to work. You can be the best lawyer, but if you don't know how to run a business, you're going to go out of business, yes. and that's the same as you can be the mm -hmm. best funeral home around, mm -hmm. but if you don't balance your books, if you don't have you know, income versus expenses, uh, right. you're out of business, and retail, obviously... Yeah is the great example you can you can have the best stuff in the world but if it's not what your customers want to buy it, not gonna happen. exactly right right so uh, so that's a that's great you know that's another great example of people working mm -hmm. together in our business community as are the commissions that you know you're both serving on and um, you know this is especially a time where we really need to tap into that expertise um, it's it is difficult economic times even in Fairfax and uh, we start on sort of the, you know, the national level, you know, very difficult economy. We know here being close to Washington, we've got federal budget cuts that, that um, you know, are going to have to happen in, in some respect over time. That's going to impact our economy. Right. What is it that business uh, men and women are seeing and talking about sort of in the macroeconomic sense? Well, we're seeing is uh, quite a few people who uh, might have been laid off or have lost their jobs due to cutbacks are, are some some are starting small businesses and uh, and and going after you know that dream that they had um, we're seeing a lot more uh, mom and pop type retailers starting up uh, the expansion of, of big retailers has drastically cut back because they've cut back nationally across across the country um, so those that are expanding are the small businesses. That's interesting. It's almost like a cycle because <laughs> before we had, you know, big, big retailers came out of an outgrowth of mom and pop shops. Right. And, and, and um, you know, with, with the change in, in how large retailers are, are acting these days, large retailers who expanded 
uh, through the early 2000s um, when expansion was rampant, um, they're, they're scaling back. And the mom and pop retailers are able to take advantage of that and, and I don't mean mom and pop retailers on a derogatory. Mom and pop are the, are the service providers of, uh, um, that, that everybody wants to go to. Um, but they're, they're taking advantage of those things that the, uh, the big companies can't do. And Mike, one of the, the keys to a small business is finding a niche or more than one niches in the economy. And part of that's being a member of the community. It is. It's funny you use the word niche because in our business, a niche is a, where you have a cremated remains in a... Uh, we, in, well, <laughs> in, in a All right, so a bad area. choice, but I, I didn't know that. See, I learned something today. But, so. uh, yes. But uh, we have a business niche. But, you know, your, your, um, your funeral home, family-owned, been around a long mm -hmm. time. There are national chains of funeral mm -hmm. homes, but you offer a, a community aspect that perhaps a chain doesn't offer. We do. Uh, also, one of the trends in the industry is uh, there has been a lot of acquisitions, and a lot of times uh, some of the big companies have to divest certain properties, and we see the, the former owners going back in and buying their property back. So uh, they love the business. They wanted to stay in it. They, they uh, got out for a while and have come back in. You know, it's, and, and it's interesting, the, um, the cemetery business, we only have three in the county. Uh, three large Three large you know, land-based cemeteries. Right. Um, and somebody had, one of you had mentioned regulatory issues mm -hmm. before. I know we have an issue that some, some in our county staff were surprised that cemeteries move dirt <laughs> as part of their business. And so we had to work through those regulatory issues because you get zoning rules and all sorts mm -hmm. of things, and, and you need a government that's responsive to that. Yeah. Regulatory compliance, I think, is again, we, as we've talked about, is one of the biggest things. Uh, you have federal and state level of taxes and different boards. Uh, we have a different board for the cemetery and funeral home. And uh, then on the local level, uh, cemetery, we have to deal with uh, land, uh, uh, stormwater runoff. We have uh, zoning, building, code issues. And uh, so we, we have to deal with that on every level. Telling you, uh, Mike mentioned stormwater. That's a big issue now in the county. Big issue in business when you're anytime you're building or remodeling, renovating, um, the environmental factors are more difficult. They're they're extremely difficult um, and, and becoming more difficult every day. Unfortunately, in this downturn, it seems as though people have taken the time to put more regulations in place, which which make it tougher. Um, they, it's, um, it's something that we as developers have to deal with. Uh, it's going to affect land values uh, in future developments and the cost of doing developments. So what we want and we hope we can do is make sure that those regulations that are put in place um, are sensitive to what we're ultimately trying to develop. And, and that's to have successful businesses. Sometimes people uh, who are not in business don't realize that when somebody says, well, have a developer pay for X. Well, right. Developers in business, you have tenants in your properties. Their rents are based on your expenses. Right. Their rents affect the, the cost of what they charge their customers, which is us. And so in a down economy, to increase business costs means that prices go up, which means people buy less because people have less disposable income to begin with. And, and then we're losing tenants. Exactly. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle. So we do need that sense of balance. We want... Um, we want safe businesses. A lot of regulations have to do with safety. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the environment's important. We need to do more stormwater. It's very important, especially in Fairfax County, Chesapeake Bay. Um, but we also have to realize that if we shut down businesses, um, that hurts the economy, hurts families, and then the cycle goes around because then you say, well, how do you, how do you lift up to people who've been hurt? Back then? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to get too far. Mike, you had mentioned um, infrastructure earlier, and um, Infrastructure is a lot of things. It's mm -hmm. everything from water, sewer, uh, streets, electric grid, and everything else. Um, transportation is a big part of our infrastructure challenge in Fairfax. Um, how is uh, traffic congestion, road maintenance, how are those issues affecting business, both big and small? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll start with our own business. Uh, you have funeral processions and people coming to and from the cemetery. And the county is actually placed, and in, in probably rightfully so, on us conditions of having funerals really only in the middle of the day, in between the rush hours, because it would be adding to the problem to spill out all that traffic on a Braddock Road uh, right in the middle of rush hour. Um, and I know personally, 
I drive around the county for different reasons, down to Route 1 or whatever. I'm not going to go down there in the middle of rush hour. I, I you know, plan my day to go down the middle, middle of the day. So um, I think everybody adapts to transportation around here, but um, we're also rooting for um, the state and local government to, to keep up with it. I think, I, I agree, everybody does adapt because mm -hmm. we do live here and we have to deal with it, but at the same token, it's, uh, traffic will be the, uh, the noose around the golden goose's neck. Um, traffic will keep people from coming to, to Fairfax uh, and Northern Virginia. Taylor, you know, that, that's a, a good point I want to explore a little bit. Um, are we reaching a point where businesses who are looking to relocate look at Fairfax County and they say, great schools, great parks, library services, great people, we'd love to be there, but we can't do business in a place where we can't drive from place A to B? It's, it's, it's all about quality of life. They look for the best quality of life for their, their employees. Where can I go that provides a, a great quality of life? Um, Fairfax Corners, we, we were talking about earlier, development. It's probably one of the only places in the county where, where companies are coming and looking to build new buildings uh, for that quality of life. They would like to have a building there at Fairfax Corner where they do have those services that's a quality of life but when you deal with this traffic with the traffic um, they have options companies have options to go out to other areas uh, that that don't have traffic which provides a better quality of life for their for their employees and you know Mike you were talking about avoiding rush hour mm -hmm. um, rush hour now extends at <laughs> least to 930 in the morning it starts up about three I know when I go to Tyson's corner um, and I'm trying to get back to my law office in Fairfax, I'm usually <coughs> thinking 2 o'clock. Right. If I'm not on 66, I'm in trouble. And on Fridays, it's, it's about 1 o'clock. And uh, that, that disrupts your day, um, and it makes it difficult. You're going to have a business meeting someplace where people are thinking, geez, it's 1230, I need to get out of here for the day. You can't do business that way. No. And, and what, what we're finding is the reverse commute is just as bad as the, 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 what was perceived as the rush hour uh, position. Yeah. You know, you're right, direction-wise. Uh, just at, uh, near my uh, supervisor's office, the intersection of Burke Lake and Braddock Road, um, the, the, the left turn versus right turn counts are almost the same yeah. in rush hour. Yeah. Uh, east, uh, right mm -hmm. turn uh, going uh, into the city and, and, and downtown Washington and left into the middle of the county. So, um, and that has all sorts of implications for how we run our transportation system. Um, of course, all of our transit tends to go in toward Washington. It's one way. Uh, metro goes one way in. Uh, bus routes tend to be, you know, between big centers, but we have people going in all different directions. That's making it a lot harder to do transportation planning. Sure is. Well, let's, let's, uh, we've got a couple minutes left. Looking at the future, um, we've talked about some difficult economic challenges, transportation challenges, but also the fact that we've got a great population, great education. Uh, what do you see in the next 10 years, Mike, for small business? How are we looking in Fairfax? Well, <clears throat> there's a little bit of a cloud right now, I think, economically, but we can get past that. And again, as I mentioned before, not a better place to be um, to start a new business with um, with the folks that we have uh, out here in the county. Uh, so I'm very um, optimistic about that. And uh, I just, I think it's a great place. Taylor, from the standpoint of larger business <coughs> and bringing in those mom and pops, how are we looking? The, the, from a retail perspective, we have been in a lull uh, for, for a couple of years and, and hopefully we will start coming out of that. Um, we do have an expensive area to live. But at the same time, we're a much more stable uh, county community than than those around the around the country. So I see the uh, the, the future's bright, provided we can deal with a, a transportation issue and to make sure that we can move people around and you know, redeploy the, our resources. I think a lot of people are expected to come into the county. Uh, I've heard some about stats a quarter of a million people in the next twenty or thirty years. Yeah. So. Um, Got to have places for them to do business and work. Right. Got, to, got to have places to do business, work, live. We look forward to taking advantage and uh, helping them with all of those. And the great thing about that is they're coming here for a reason. They're coming here because it's a great place to live, to work, do business, and we're going to keep it that way. And I know with 
both of you on the job were in good hands. <laughs> I'd like to thank Taylor Chess and Michael Doherty for joining me today and also for the time and dedication they provide to their commissions and businesses. Community members like Taylor and Mike are helping to make Braddock and Fairfax a great place to do business. I hope you've enjoyed this segment of Braddock Neighborhood News. Thank you for watching. Tune in next month for another edition, and please remember to look for ways to volunteer. Your community needs you.